Hello and welcome to another video by www.electricalpereview.com. In this example, we're going to be talking about three phase transmission lines and learning how to solve for the capacitance to neutral in farads per mile, the capacitive reactance to neutral in ohm miles, the capacitive reactance to neutral in ohms, and the charging current to the nearest ampere. The problem states, a three phase, 50 mile, 230 kV, 60 hertz transmission line with horizontal spacing 30 feet from the center of each phase is made up of three Osprey ACSR conductors per phase that are equally spaced 12 inches apart from each other. If Osprey ACSR has an outer diameter of 0.879 inches and a GMR of 0.0284 feet, calculate the following. All right, so this is a lot of information given to us on the problem. Let's go ahead and put all of these values into a diagram and then let's start by solving for A, the capacitance to neutral in farads per mile. So this is what our three-phase transmission line looks like. We've got three ACSR Osprey conductors per phase. So that's a three conductor bundle per phase. Here's our A phase, our B phase, our C phase. Each of the ACSR Osprey conductors are spaced 12 inches apart. So from this conductor to this conductor, there's 12 inches, this conductor to this conductor, there's 12 inches, and this conductor to this conductor is 12 inches. And then each of our three phases, A, B, and C, are horizontally spaced 30 feet from center. So from B phase to A phase is 30 feet, and from B phase to C phase is 30 feet. Now, to calculate the capacitance to neutral in farads per mile, I'm gonna use the formula that says capacitance per unit length in farads per foot is gonna be equal to 7.348 times 10 to the negative 12 divided by the log of GMD divided by the radius. So first, let's solve for the GMD. GMD stands for geometric mean distance. And GMD for three conductors is just gonna be the cube root times each of the three distances between each of the three phases. So from A to B phase, we've got 30 feet. From B phase to C phase, we also have 30 feet. However, from A phase all the way to C phase, we've got 30 feet plus 30 feet or 60 feet. All right, let's try this in our calculator. We've got the cube root of 30 times 30 times 60. So we've got a GMD of 37 point, and we'll round to 80 feet. Quick unit check, feet times feet times feet is feet cubed. The cube root of feet cubed is just feet. All right, next let's solve for the radius. Now normally when we only have one conductor per phase, the value for R is just gonna be the radius of that individual conductor. However, we've got three conductor per phase, right? This is a three conductor bundle. So for the value for radius, we actually have to calculate the overall radius of that three conductor bundle. So the formula for a three conductor bundle is gonna be the cube root once again, times the radius of the conductor times the distance squared that each conductor is separated by. So R is just the radius of this ACSR conductor and distance squared is gonna be 12 inches squared. Now, do we know the radius of this ACSR conductor? No, but we know that the Osprey ACSR conductor has an outer diameter of 0.879 inches. So to find R in this formula, all we have to do is divide that diameter by two. So 0.879 inches divided by two. All right, in our calculator, we've got 0 0.879 inches divided by two gives us a radius of 0 0.4395 inches. All right, let's go ahead and plug that in here and see what we get. So the three conductor bundle radius is gonna be the cube root of Here's the R we just calculated, 0 0.4395 inches times our distance squared. Each conductor is separated by 12 inches. So times 12 inches squared 
So we've got the cube root of, I'm just gonna use the second answer button to bring in the 0.4395 inches, right? Times 12 inches squared, all under that cube root. Again, quick unit check, inches times inches squared is equal to inches cubed. The cube root of inches cubed is, of course, inches. All right, the overall radius of that three conductor bundle is approximately 3.985 inches. Now, are we done? Almost. In this formula, all we need to know is GMD and R. However, this is a ratio, so GMD and R need to be in the same units so that the units cancel. And that's true regardless of what our units is over here. These can be in any units as long as they're equal. So GMD is in feet, the radius is in inches. We can either convert the radius from inches to feet or the GMD from feet to inches. Let's go ahead and convert the GMD from feet to inches, right? If I want feet to cancel, I'm gonna put feet on bottom, inches on top, one foot is equal to 12 inches, feet on top, cancel feet on bottom, I'm left with the unit of inches. In my calculator, I'm just gonna type in 37.80 times 12, and I get a GMD in inches of 453.6 inches. All right, we've got our GMD in inches. We've got the radius of our three conductor bundle in inches. Let's go ahead and plug these values in this formula over here on the left. All right, the capacitance to neutral is going to be equal to 7.348 times 10 to the negative 12 divided by the log of, here's our GMD, 453.6 inches divided by the radius of our three conductor bundle, 3.985 inches. Quick unit check, inches on top, inches on bottom, fantastic. They cancel and now we're ready to plug these values in our calculator. So first I'm gonna hit the fraction key, 7.348 times 10 to the negative 12, divided by the log fraction key again. Here's our GMD, 453.6 inches divided by 3.985 inches. Hit enter, 3.574 times 10 to the negative 12 in the units of farads per feet. Now, are we done? Almost. Notice how A is asking us for the capacitance to neutral in farads per mile. We're in farads per feet, so all we have to do is convert to farads per mile. How do we do that? Well, we've got feet on bottom. If we want that to cancel, then we're gonna move feet on top over here, put miles down below, and one mile, we've got 5,280 feet. Quick unit check, feet on bottom cancels with feet on top and we're gonna be left in the units of farads per mile. Great, which is exactly what we're being asked to solve in. All right, in my calculator, this value is already there, right? So I'm just gonna hit the times button. You'll notice it says answer times, and then 5,280 to convert to farads per mile. Now, um, really quick, when you're working with transmission lines, a lot of times you're working with uh, really big exponents. So you'll notice, see all these big zeros? I find it's easier if we change our mode to scientific. And when we do that, instead of just hitting, if I just hit enter, it might not give me the answer I'm looking for. So I'm gonna go all the way back up, bring my capacitive reactance down, and then multiply it again by 5,280. You'll notice you'll get a much more accurate answer. Great, so our capacitive reactance in farads per mile is 1.887 times 10 to the negative eight farads per mile. And that is the answer for step A. Another word on units, a lot of times you'll see the use of micro in transmission lines. 
And all micro really is is 10 to the minus 6. So if the question said and said solve for uh, microfarads per mile, we can convert this to microfarads pretty easily. We're already at 10 to the negative 8. So to bump it over times 10 to the negative 6, we can just move this decimal over once and twice. So if we were asked for microfarads per mile, that would just be 0 0.01887 microfarads per mile, right? Same value. And we can demonstrate that in the calculator as well. We can say 0 0.01887 times 10 to the micros negative 6. And when I hit enter, I should get the same value up here, right? So if I hit enter, you'll notice I'm right back at 1.887, right? Approximately 1.887 times 10 to the negative 8. That's step A. Let's use this value for step B. Step B is asking for the capacitive reactants to neutral in ohm miles. Really important vocabulary. Capacitive reactants is that X value, right? If we're dealing with capacitive reactants, it's C. If it was inductive reactants, it would be sub L. But reactance is always going to be in the units of ohms, where before we solve for the capacitance C in farads. So just be careful with your units. Let's convert our capacitive reactance in farads per mile to capacitive reactance in ohm miles. How do we do that? Well, it's pretty easy. Capacitive reactance is just 1 divided by 2 pi times frequency times r capacitance. All right, let's plug this in. I've got capacitive reactance equals 2, 1 divided by 2 pi times frequency. What's our frequency? 60 hertz. So 2 pi, 60 hertz. Let's extend this a little further. Times our capacitance, right? 1.887 times 10 to the minus 8 farads per mile. This is our angular velocity, right? 2 pi times frequency. When we multiply that by farads, the inverse of that is going to be ohm. So we can cancel hertz and farads. We know we'll be left with ohms on top. And since miles, notice how this is a per or a fraction, right? Dividing a fraction by another fraction is the same as moving this value or this unit to the top. So our new units when we calculate this is going to be ohm miles, right? Calculate the capacitive reactance to neutral in ohm miles. In our calculator, I've got one fraction key, 2 pi times 60 hertz times, and notice I've already got this value right here. So again, I'm just going to do second answer and then hit enter. Great. Our capacitive reactance is 1.406 times 10 to the 5. And what are our units? Ohm miles, right? Ohm miles. Fantastic. So that's going to be the answer to step B. Our capacitive reactance is 1.406 times 10 to the 5 ohm miles. Next step, let's use this value for C. Step C wants to know the capacitive reactance to neutral in ohms. Well, this is our capacitive reactance in ohm miles. So we can convert our capacitance in ohm miles to just capacitance in ohms by dividing by miles, right? If I divide by miles, then I've got miles on top, cancels with miles on bottom, and I'm left in the units of ohms. So what value of miles do we use? Well, we know that the three-phase transmission line is 50 miles long. So in this case, the length of our transmission line is L equals 50 miles. So underneath this fraction that I just made to convert my units, I'm just going to divide by 50 miles. All right, let's go to our calculator. And since I have already have this value again, it's already right here, our capacitive reactance to neutral in ohm miles, I'm just going to divide that by 50, right? That's the same as 1.406 times 10 to the 5 ohm miles divided by 50 miles. We get a total capacitive reactance of 
eight one one times ten to the three ohms. Or we know that ten to the three is just what? Ten to the three is the same as using K for kilo. So we can simply say our capacitive reactance to neutron ohms for the total 50 mile transmission line is 2.811 kilo ohms. That's the answer for step C. Last, let's use this to answer step D. Step D asks for the charging current to the nearest ampere. So how do we solve for charging current? We know the voltage and we know the reactance. So we can use Ohm's law. Ohm's law is V equals two IZ. If we solve for current, we can rewrite this to say I equals to V over Z. And if we plug in our capacitive reactance for impedance, we can say the charging current will equal the voltage across that reactance divided by the reactance. Now, what voltage do we use? Well, we know it's a three phase, 230 kV transmission line, right? Three phase, 230 kV. Notice the problem didn't say if this is a line value, line to neutral, phase voltage, but since it's a three phase transmission line, it doesn't have to specify. A three phase transmission line is only going to be rated in three phase values. So we know this 230 kV is a line voltage value. Now, before we get carried away and just plug this into Ohm's law over here, let's just clarify and make sure this is the correct voltage. Here's what I mean. Remember that this was the capacitive reactance to neutral, right? So if we visualize this, here's our capacitive reactance to neutral, X of C. We're just going to show that to ground. So our capacitive reactance to neutral, we want to know our charging current. In order to use Ohm's law over here, we need to use the voltage across the capacitive reactance to, here's that keyword, neutral. So the voltage across the capacitive reactance to neutral, it's not going to be our line voltage. It's going to be our phase voltage or the line to neutral voltage. Same thing. So how do we calculate the phase voltage? Easy. We can just take our line voltage of 230 kV and divide by the square root of 3. All right, let's plug these values into Ohm's law and solve for our capacitive charging current. So we can say I of C, capacitive charging current, is going to equal the voltage across that reactance, which is our phase voltage since it's a reactance to neutral value. So 230 kV divided by square root of 3 and divided by our capacitive reactance to neutral. That's 2.811 kilo ohms from the previous step. Plug this in our calculator. I'm going to hit the fraction sign. 230 kV divided by square root of 3, all under. And notice I have my capacitive reactance right here in my calculator. So I'm just going to do second answer instead of having to waste time typing that in. All right, I hit enter. And since I'm still in scientific mode, I get 4.72 times 10 to the 1, which is the same as just times 10. We can multiply this by 10 by just moving over the decimal once and we're left with 47.2 amps. We can even verify that in our calculator. We can go to our mode, change from scientific back to normal, and convert that without any 10 to the exponent multiplier, and we've got 47.2 amps. Now you'll notice the question asks for the charging current to the nearest ampere. P exam does this a lot. In other words, Depending on how you carry your decimals, a lot of times they just want to know to the nearest whole unit. That way you don't have to carry every decimal in your calculator. So what's the nearest ampere? Easy. 0.2 is less than 0.5, so we round down. The charging current to the nearest ampere is just 47 amps. And that is the answer for our capacitive charging current to the nearest ampere.